and welcome to Joseph's Model Railway, and it's a real mess, and Toy Room. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, you don't need to like, follow, or subscribe. I just put the videos out there where I can have a holly jolly great time doing so. Now, big news. While it's under these Coke cans because it's drying, this is now the final track work officially laid. We've corrected that dad's army loop at the other end. So we now have an absolute two loop model railway running, will be running on this main level. The problem is there is quite a bit of stuff and projects going on here at the moment. So I can't even roughly take you around with a loco, but it is coming up. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about cattle grates. They are great, and we're gonna make them even more fantastic, and you're gonna fall in love with them. Albeit the way this one turned out would be better suited to a HO scale layout. So if you're working on HO, take note, because everything I do will suit you perfectly. For the double O modelers, there's one little tiny step I probably would have done to make it slightly bigger and wider, but it's all done now. I'm very happy with it, how it's turned out. So let's dive on in and have a look. It will be a short video because as you can see, I've got plenty of work to get going on with to get this cleaned up so we can see some trains going around it. So the next few videos might be a little bit shorter, a quick how do I did this and how I'm making that, including another little project, which I accidentally blew up and I have to order more parts for, but that's all just the fun of what this hobby is all about. So let's go and check out that cattle grate, shall we? Now, for those of you that don't know about these, these are quite a common sight here in Australia. Effectively, the purpose in them is you don't necessarily need a gate. It's just generally a series of steel rails and often the exact same rails that we use on the railways that have been cut up into size to create a grid. As a result, the hooves of such animals, such as cattle, sheep, etc., can't cross them without getting stuck. And as a result, it's a wonderful way to go because your car just goes brrrr as you drive over them and you carry on. The style that I'm working on is something that I saw a lot of in the 80s when we drove on a lot, on a lot of rural roads on the Eyre Peninsula in South Australia. There are a lot more roads that are now paved, asphalted, and tarmacked these days. However, there are still some to be seen. I like to pay a special thanks to my brother who managed to grab a few extra shots while he was out and about at work where you can see We've these. We've got our action. frame rate adjusted this time, so no flickering. And what I want to talk to you about is you'll recall, we're in the studio at the moment. If we just swing around, you can see there is plenty of what this is, is slat wall. Now it's the traditional sort of shop fittings. You sort of see where they come in with their hooks and they slot it in. It's a groove in the wall that we place in and hang the stuff up on. So, What's the point in this slat wall? I have a lot of these ribs, which is what they are called, left over. So we have these aluminium ribs, and this is, as we come into the next shot now, what I've been using. And here are the parts we require to build this thing. I took some uh, leftover track, and of course, here is our bit of slat wall that I just took with the Dremel tool and then sliced it accordingly. Remember, this is a very thin type of aluminium and quite easy to work with. You could do it with a small hacksaw. The Dremel tool is just easier because the width of the cutting disc meant I could just glide over in one hit to keep the height quite consistent. We're going to need to uh, give it a, a lick of paint in the concrete. And we want to paint these bits of track in the nice Woodland Scenics rusty rail marker will do very nicely. It's then just as simple as putting a bead of glue down on the edge there and taking our pieces of steel rail and then just lining them up accordingly and letting them dry. First, you're going to need to go get some dirt. Here's where I locally acquired what I'll need for that coastal section. But what we're going to see now is just traditional brown I found out in the bush. Your best friend, go and grab yourself some of my favourite 
baking paper. And the reason is, as we're working on this, if anything spills over, it's easy, it slips off, you can pour it out. Get your dirt onto that stuff and into the oven. You can bake it as hot as you want. We're not scorching earth here. I went right up to 300 degrees to try and speed it up. Make sure it's cooled down before you start handling it. Then it's just a matter of sieving it down to get to the various different grades you need. And then you can put it into a container. And as you can see here, I've got fine, um, coarse, and half and half blends, and it's all ready to go. Now we pave our way for a bit of a location where this is going to be, and we're gonna need some tires. So don't go along to your favorite matchbox and rip them off. Here's what I've decided to go with to create some nice tires on the edges. These are the tires that I purchased. I'm sure we'll find use for these sort of tires later on, but let's just bring it in. And what I like about these tires is you can see we've got that nice distinctive tread pattern on it, including from the side angle, the uh, side biters that would grab us there. And that just gives us really good texture as though it's an actual used truck or tractor tire that, is, that were seen along so many of these cattle crossings as we saw in earlier pictures. And those fingernails do look terrible. And of course, once again, we take our spray paint. Of course, it's our Tamiya Matte White spray can. And then just from a little bit of a distance, we're just going to brush them along with a little bit of white paint. And of course it doesn't, they don't have to be absolutely perfect white because as the weather comes along and weathers them down, of course we are going to see a bit of the black start to come back. So they're looking quite good. <coughs> 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 Girls and boys, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for another video. Getting you in nice and close now. Check out all these wrinkles. Yes, indeed, I'm maturing nicely. I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me on this one. I hope this has given you maybe a little bit of inspiration and perhaps you're going to uh, attempt adding a cattle crossing of your own to your own layout. Love to see the pictures and or videos. Make sure you comment, the usual sort of stuff. I did want to just point out one other thing that of course I did as a prototypical crossing would expect. Apart from having it, we still have a removable gate that opens up that we can access equipment that may not have the ability to pass the actual crossing itself. Or if we do need to let the cows out, we can take them out in this direction. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Toodles.